All right, uh, let's continue with our specific emission. Now, if you go to value line, value line has about 100 different industries. So, and if you compare uh, value line industries and Finviz industries and Morningstar industries, they will have different type of set of companies. In, okay, because it's quite difficult to divide some companies into different industry and Cisco, very good example of this because uh, even though it is included in telecom equipment industry, but also they have not only equipment, they have software, they have services, they have additional uh, kind of parts in their business which can be allocated to different group or different industry. Okay, and uh, specifically if we go through like what the telecom equipment, you probably understand that it could be some uh, uh, like public switching equipment, including analog switches and digital switches, and then transmission equipment, e including transmission like such as optical fiber, base uh, stations, multiplexes, local loops, etc. And then already whatever included in customer premises equipment, okay, private switches, local AI network, moderns, mobile phone, etc. Now, if you understand that, uh, like you constantly interact with companies uh, which work in that. Uh, specific industry and of course you understand that uh, for companies which provide that equipment they mostly deal not with the individual clients like we are uh, majority of them they uh, like deal with service providers okay because we probably buy only a modem and maybe some kind of uh, camera and that's it uh, majority of the equipment is already going to be set by service provider which is an internet provider company or uh, like video provider or, or any other company. Okay, and that's why currently what happened with telecom industry, uh, they supply to uh, those businesses telecom equipment and now they see the slow, uh, like uh, it, the sales level slow down. And the main reason I presume you all understand that currently a lot of businesses, they reshape their operational activities and they are not 100% sure how they're going to operate in the future because uh, current pandemic issue is the first in its like uh, sense. And uh, when you think about it, some businesses at the moment, they run their team remotely. So they let all people go home. And the question is for a lot of people, is it going to be the same as before when the pandemic is over? A company is going to invite all employees back into office or not? And that's why companies which were planning to invest in infrastructure within an office and buy all this equipment, they at the moment are posing and they, they kind of uh, postpone their decision because they're not 100% sure that they will need all that equipment in the future. And that's one thing. But secondly, as well, some companies, they, of course, suffer from financial uh, sense. Uh, they don't have enough revenue. They don't have enough income. And they're not sure uh, about future income as well. And they think, should I spend money to renew my equipment or I will try to run whatever equipment I have right now. So, and of course, it's affected sales in this specific industry. Now, I believe that in the future, those company which... Uh, we're planning to invest into this particular sector, they're still going to buy this equipment because it, it is necessary. At the moment, I, I don't believe any business can survive without having a proper IT infrastructure and a certain like I mean, uh, infrastructure, especially for big businesses as well. And even small businesses are required. For example, we wouldn't be able to run this webinar if I didn't have all this proper equipment, right? And uh, at the same time, uh, the allocation in the like the purchases for different equipment might change so if companies were planning to spend a lot of money to kind of uh, put equipment in their office or in their particular business now they have to understand how they're going to run remote team if they're going to set kind of keep that remote team as well and that's where uh, Cisco is one of the companies which can be really flexible because it has certain uh, like a set of products which can be used by 
both types of directions. Uh, they have software, they have uh, equipment for offices and for like businesses which are located in one place, but also they have a quite good uh, software system and also some services and also equipment for remote teams. So that's why I believe that Cisco has a potential regardless uh, which direction uh, pandemic will bring us. Okay, this is particularly the case. Now, if you go to value line and uh, read about telecommunication industry, you will see some very no, well-known name like Nokia, um, er Ericsson, uh, which are mostly located in Europe, uh, Qualcomm, uh, Marvel, and some other companies. But if you look at Cisco, Cisco is one of the biggest companies here in that particular industry. Okay, and uh, uh, let's have a look how I analyze that specific industry. So I went to value line. I've done bo in both ways. I, I went to value line, but also I went to uh, Finvius. So I inserted and I saw that there are 69 companies in database of value line, which uh, allocated to that specific industry. Okay, 69 companies. Next thing what I've done, I put only one parameter, which is uh, profitability. I just put from zero to, so it's not negative, it's positive. Whatever profit is there, I put, uh, show me the companies which are profitable. And look, out of 69 companies, only 28 companies left on the surface. The rest of them, they are not even making money. They are losing money. Okay? It's more than 50% of companies in that specific industry, they are losing money. So guys, if you are thinking of buying and investing ETFs, so uh, especially industry ETFs, uh, I wouldn't definitely recommend to invest in ETFs of that specific industry because majority of businesses in that uh, industry, they are losing money, they are not making money. And the next thing what I've done, because for me, okay, I know that there is a set of companies which making money, but now I want to know uh, uh, like how many of them actually on discount to price right now. I even didn't look at quality yet here. And that's what I've seen. I put trailing P ratio, the valuation uh, below 15 from 0.5% uh, to 15 and only three companies came up. Okay. Uh, can you imagine out of 69 companies on the valuation level only three companies come up. Now I decided to check it. So I went to Finviz and look at the uh, another information like set of information. So basically I copied all this data and uh, went to Finvius, right? And that's what I've seen here. Now, uh, uh, three companies, uh, COMM, the first one, Finvius shows that last quarter it was uh, in loss. Uh, that's why they don't have PE. Usually that's what uh, Finvius does. It means that this company is, is already not profitable. It's in losing money right now as well. Even in value line, there isn't still information because it's kind of delayed that uh, company is profitable. Okay, but currently we see that it's not. Also, it's not that huge of business. Uh, like it's $1.8 billion, uh, still big business, but not as big as Cisco. Cisco is $170 billion in capitalization. Okay. Another company is really small. It's only $263 million in capitalization. For some guys, you might think, oh, it's a huge company. But in reality, for stock market, it's quite low company. And uh, if we try to understand this specific industry, the bigger the company, the easier for them to serve bigger clients, bigger businesses. Okay, And a small company, they might serve uh, local kind of small businesses, but for them, it would be very difficult to provide uh, equipment and uh, serve on a competitive price level as well and service level uh, with other big industries, uh, big companies like Cisco. Cisco also, if you go to uh, Finviz and do the same screening, but in Finviz you will see that um, Cisco is the biggest company by capitalization, but also it's the lowest PE ratio there. Okay, that's why I chose Cisco for tonight's masterclass in order to show you how it operates. And also here we can see that uh, COMM uh, doesn't have communication equipment. Uh, it's Comscope holding company. We see that P is negative. Um, it seems like, uh, you see earnings per share trailing 12 months, 
negative minus five dollars. But when we look at uh, earnings per share next year, it's also like uh, they don't have any guidance. It's not a good idea to buy companies if they don't give you any projections about their future income. And uh, that maj majority of cases, they are small companies like PLPC, okay, we can see it. So that's why uh, Cisco is uh, much bigger in this particular industry. Now also uh, from business perspective, when you uh, think about any, any type of industry, uh, when the crisis comes, recession comes, and I, I believe that now in Australia we're in official recession, uh, what happens that some small companies, uh, they go into liquidation, they get bankrupt, right? Uh, what happens with clients who are dealing with those companies? They're not lost. Customers, they don't disappear. They stay, and they're picked by other companies which manage to survive. So that's why for us, it's extremely important during this recession time understand which businesses are going to survive because it's not only keep that business on the same level but also uh, it will let that business to pick uh, clients from those businesses which get into liquidation in tobacco property and if you go back into history and you look at all recessions you will see that some companies after the recession time they thrive they grew quite a lot and they made uh, a huge share in the market because they took the share from those companies which, which couldn't uh, manage that particular industry. Okay, this is uh, uh, about this specific industry. 